Mobile phones have become part of the everyday communication landscape of people around the world. In Fiji, a multicultural island nation in the Pacific, mobile phone ownership rose to approximately 1.3 million users in 2018. This in a country with a population of just over 900,000 people. According to the latest We Are Social 2018 report, the vast majority of Fijians access the internet and social media using an internet-enabled mobile phone. Whereas only 28% of Fijians access the internet and social media through a desktop or laptop computer, 68% of Fijians use a smartphone. The high rates of smartphone ownership and usage are especially visible in Fiji's capital, Suva, and the Greater suva Nosuri Corridor, where over a third of Fiji's entire population lives. In the Greater Suva areas, 4G and 3G networks are prevalent. So too is access to vendors where you can buy a smartphone or purchase prepaid top-up cards for airtime and data from one or both of Fiji's two major telecommunications companies, Vodafone or Digicel. Smartphones have been particularly important for opening up the world of social media. With a smartphone, it is much easier to take and edit photos or videos and share them with others. Fijians have, in fact, become expert at posting, commenting upon, sharing, or lurking on social media. According to the We Are Social 2018 report, over 500,000 Fijians use social media, with Facebook being the most popular site by far. Google, YouTube, and to a much lesser extent, Instagram are also popular. In addition, chat and messenger programs such as Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and other similar apps are on the rise. Fijian society continues to adapt to this rapidly changing media environment. Fijians are integrating smartphones and social media into their lives and are also drawing on their own cultural values to redefine social media practices. However, like other places in the world, Fijians, and Fijian parents in particular, are struggling with the pace of change smartphones and social media brings into their lives. Many Fijian mothers and fathers are grappling with questions such as When should I allow them to set up a social media account? How much time should my child spend online? What kind of websites and social media platforms should they use? Should this be different for my sons and daughters? These questions are not only about their own children and strategies for digital parenting. They also reflect broader changes in Fijian society tied to processes of urbanization, the digital revolution, and consumerism. Yeah, 
Andi bi mo harin jala kabar nama tua. Haradeo, kecia sarang di tanga tadi. Nabi kabila ka. Rasa ka mata ka ko sawut. Kamera ka wabina ka tadi na. So, kaya ngono 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 Because culture won't change, it's your upbringing, it's your family, it's your blood, whatever you want to call it. But it's starting to change. So what you, you can't do a culture because it's starting to fade away. So it must be the system that was used then. The generation that is now, they will have to live through a present system. Which is now technology. It's happening now. There's no telling stories or what. People are on the phone the whole day. Then they say to John Taki. After that. Taki. Yeah. 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 Uh, married with six children. My eldest is um, 19, and my um, Youngest is six months and two weeks. My husband um, is in the army. Basically, I am the primary parent because I'm the one that's always with the kids. Monday to Friday, there's no tablets, there's no internet for the younger ones, for the elders because he's in university, so I allow him to. But last year, he wasn't allowed to. But now that he's in university, so. He's allowed to be on the internet 24-7, but I trust him. The, the little ones are the ones that's uh, still new to the internet. I'm a single mom. Uh, I'm 42 years old. I have two children, uh, Katia, who is 19, and Taniela, who is 17. And having people around me constantly on the phone, checking their social media, really irritated me because I like to stay outside and have a glass of wine on a Friday night and talk. Nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> They're all on their phone. <laughs> so it was very annoying, but then I just had to sort of, you know, if you can't um, fight it, then join the battle, I guess. Yeah, so basically that's what so it's progress to that point and now sometimes i find i really don't like it i find myself having to force myself to put the phone down you know because of all these all the social media that we're on at the moment yeah actually i I've, i've been using phones for about six years now i got my first phone i was 13 and it was given to me as a birthday present from my dad i think so um i mean I didn't have a phone before that. I didn't know, and it was my first phone was a smartphone. Mm. So you know, I was instantly given the opportunity to be able to go online and to create social media accounts. <clears throat> and I had so much, you know, I didn't know there was so much out there. So it was kind of overwhelming at first, but then you, you know, six years later, and you're used to it, kind of. <laughs> He gave me. Um, He, because he bought me my first phone when I was 13. So we sat down and he went through everything, mm -hmm. what the phone does, what not to do, where not to go, you know, yeah. which apps to download and not to download. <laughs> so I was monitoring the usage, but there wasn't much to monitor because she wasn't really allowed to go on onto social media up until Facebook when she was 18. And the reason for that was because my thoughts are being a teenager and growing up without social media is hard enough yeah. you know having to um, negotiate different relationships and that kind of thing and i thought if she was on facebook and was 
um, you know, um, exposed to everything that happens on Facebook. And I, and I could see some of her, the, her friends and uh, her peers, the things that they talked about and were exposed to on social media. Oh my gosh, I was horrified at the thought of having to deal with that as well. Initially, it was uh, um, when they were Jane and Ryan, weekdays, no social media, weekends they could, at their father's place, it was completely... Um, out of your control. Out of my control. But he was, at that point, when they were in high school, when they were both in Jane and Ryan a few years ago, he, I didn't have, I didn't allow us to have constant access to the internet here, but he had Wi-Fi 24 hours, so they were, that was, and I didn't have any control over that. But I think he had measures in place to monitor their usage. Um, other than that, we don't have phones at the dinner table. Um, we try and have meals together where there's just no access to mobile phones. Um, I try to keep phones out of the bedroom at night. Mm -hmm. When everyone goes to their bed to sleep, all the phones are outside. I think it lasted maybe two or three days because everyone's alarm is on their phone. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was suffering. <laughs> yeah, and it, it wasn't yeah. such a big problem for me because, um, you know, all through my teen years, I was very active. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of sports and I was always at school and, you know, training before school, school, training after school. <coughs> so I didn't have time and it wasn't such a big issue to be on social media, mm -hmm. to have my phone to constantly be on it because I was already so preoccupied. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My family lives uh, right in uh, Bonolibu, and back there, there's like no reception. It's it's one of the beauty back in the villages where you just go and just relax and don't get to think about any social media updates or all this stuff. So last last holiday, the, the Christmas, I went and I spent the holidays back at home, and uh, um, my phone were only I only used my phone for just taking pictures, and I never go to the internet. So I never make phone calls, it's just taking pictures. So I think that's the only difference. Back at uh, home, you don't go online. So the policy was they would only accept friends who they personally knew in person. They could accept those uh, friend requests. And I, I made another um, uh, thing that we had at home and we discussed that you are not allowed to aid anybody in your current class. The reason being of cyberbullying from, you know, if you have an argument at school, it tends to go into social media and escalate from there on and so on. So once they've left school, once they've, so when we were in UK, all the friends in UK are now on the Facebook. Next year, when they leave from seven, all the friends they can add, you know, they can add a whole bunch of them on We on have Facebook. some of them, like... Some that come I home. trust, I, I, they come home, I know them personally. I also have all the password. I get access to all the email account password. They, if they've got, I think she had Insta at one stage. Uh, she doesn't have it, bye bye if they have it. So I, I get access to all of them. I actually crazy. spend a lot of time on my phone. Like, especially like at the moment we don't get our phones during the weekdays, we only get it in the weekend. So like we try to use it up as much My as possible. Mix. <laughs> to the maximum. So I think we spend most of our weekend on the phone. Obviously on social media. Um, yeah. chat, to people, chat with people and um, just, just on social media. Don't, don't we don't have the pictures vibe. No. Whoa, we don't do no. that. No. No. We're on YouTube, watch videos and all that. Facebook and vibe. 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 So That's the only two allow, we're allowed. She doesn't allow us to use Insta and Snapchat. While parents in Fiji set up rules to restrict access to social media platforms and other sites, they find it challenging to safeguard their children from negative experiences. As soon as they learn how to manage privacy settings on a social media site like Facebook, a new platform has captured their son's and daughter's attention. Even if their kids are not on a particular social media site, they are still exposed to what is happening through their friends, cousins, and others who might have different rules and access. I also foster kids and I see the danger of that. I've had kids who I foster come to my home. One of the first things I do is 
sit with them and go through some of the rules of internet use. Um, and I go through the social media profile. So if they've got a Facebook or something, then I sit with them and say, okay, open it up. I want to see what you have. Believe it or not, one young girl who was 15, 15, yeah. 15 who came and joined our family for about six months. She had 3,500 people on her Facebook. 99% of them were young males outside of Fiji. They were from Pakistan, Dubai, from Pakistan, India. Nigeria. People she had no idea who was at the other side. And I had to sit down and explain to her how dangerous this was. And, um, <clears throat> and it was, I could see that she was putting kind of sexy kind of pictures of herself. And then she would get about 500 likes from those people. And she'd put more and more risque pictures after that. So I was explaining to her how it works and how dangerous it can escalate into something more dangerous. So I had her delete all that. I was only restricted with like time with my parents. There, there's no strict timetable for when I could and couldn't use my phone. But if my parents noticed that I was uh, spending too much time on my phone, they, they just like let me know. So you need to focus on your studies as well, otherwise, um, they, they didn't say it outright, but then they threw hints that it could be taken away. <laughs> my parents have never asked me to, for my password or to look through my phone and stuff like that. But my sister's phones were very frequently checked uh, because my parents didn't want them talking to boys or, you know, just just doing anything, <laughs> anything that wasn't approved. They Yeah, so their phones would constantly get checked. Certainly mm -hmm. notice... Uh, now that I think back, like, I noticed a disparity in the way that I was given, like, you know, uh, unrestricted access to my phone whenever I wanted. <laughs> yeah, throw that right back at me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but my sisters, however, yeah, the phones were always checked. And uh, I think one of the reasons was, was a legitimate safety concern as well, that my parents always needed to know who they were talking to, who they were communicating. But, I mean... I was the youngest and they never cared about me, so <laughs> I guess it's a gender thing. I don't believe in son and daughters being treated differently. If I had sons, I would do the same with the sons. I've actually talked with boys in their class who've come home and we've talked about that. And I've told them too how dangerous it's. I don't think there's a element with girl and boy in that. Uh, I'm not going to lie about it. My son actually accidentally went into this website because he was downloading games. So the you know, those porn sites actually appeared. Uh, and he was curious, and then he saw this, you know, half-naked woman. So he's like, oh, what's this? And then he clicked. Uh, and I'm sure he must have watched a few things because um, after a while, my elder son started noticing that he's been missing. Like, he would just go to the toilet and then lock himself for an hour or something or go into the room, and he'll be away for quite some time. So my elder son said, um, hey, why are you taking so long? Uh, and he goes, uh, no, I'm just playing games. You know, and my son, you know, he, I talked to him as well. Eh? So, so he kind of, you know, he figured these kids must be seeing something. So um, he took his tablet and, and went through the, the history and found this site. So, um, you know, when I came back that afternoon, I was so angry. But then I, you know, because it's because we had Internet. I took it out anyway. We have the modem somewhere there. We had Internet was open to the kids. So um, that was a lesson for me, you know, to, not to have the Internet open at least have a password or something. The fact that, it's, that information is so accessible, mm. right? Everything is at the tip of your, of your fingers. Everything is so manipulable. You know, people can take pictures and do what they want with it. Um, information can be falsified so easily and people believe everything they see on social media. So, you know, you've got to be really careful about what you put out there. Um, so that was one of my main concerns, that they may say something or do something that's going to be captured and then, you know, that it, it'll be harmful to them. As we have heard from Fijian parents, communication technologies present a variety of challenges. Smartphones and social media have created dilemmas about how to manage and monitor the ways that children use media and technology, how this should change as children get older, whether daughters should have different rules to sons, and how to cope with problematic situations as they arise. Over the past few years, parents and their children in Fiji have read headlines in the newspapers about Fiji's high ranking in Google searches for pornography. Number eight, according to Google. Cases of photographs and videos of girls being circulated without consent. Harassment of young people online, as well as suicides of young people, which have been linked, at least in part, to social media use.
And while some of these cases can be attributed to the kind of moral panics associated with new technologies, many parents we talked with were only one person removed from a family member or friend whose lives were touched by such incidents. The most problem we have with social media is sending each, like a girl sending a guy nude pics. Nude pics. That's the Sorry, biggest yeah, problem. And, and like the guys talk about it and share it, share it with, it, with each other. Um, show it in school to other boys. The guys enjoy it when they get pictures, mm. I'll say quite frankly. And I think some of the teachers as well, they have quite a judgmental attitude towards girls who've sent like inappropriate pictures. And then there'll be like vicious rumors spreading about her that she's like such a bad person for sending it or why did she have to do that? And like the girls I think it's quite a double standard in relation to boys, even though he's the one sharing it. Mm. They won't say that he's such a bad guy for sharing it. They'll be just like, she's such a stupid bad girl. Why did she have to be in a relationship at such a young age and blah, blah, blah. In like one of... Um, as recently there's a case that has happened they even like yeah. upload i've heard from other guys like when they discuss things they even upload videos on other sites and everything so social media consumption is everybody's personal taste and personal uh, decisions what they do but and only up until the point where it doesn't hurt people mm -hmm. right if people start to get affected negatively by your social usage social media usage then something has to change. The online safety bill is important. I agree Never with it. I like it. You know, it's so important. Yes. You know, people need to be held accountable if they're going to um, bully or victimize or hurt people. Mm. See, just recently uh, the Fiji government introduced the online safety bill. Um, I think it's uh, taking a leaf out of the NZ government's book, um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's, that is the top-down approach, but the problem there is how will they implement it in terms of resources. And another thing you have to realize, social media, someone can just make a fake account and just post anything. How do you track this person? It requires more resources. So I think it's just both parties need to um, incorporate themselves and talk it out and start acting upon it. Well, for me, it's very different. Like, I don't exactly agree with him because... Uh, when you allow government to have a say in what uh, like the reach of social media, then uh, I mean, not all governments are the same. Uh, mm. You can have a government that uh, implements a law to restrict freedom of speech to their own advantage. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was so much controversy around when PG first started to talk about uh, online safety, the online safety bill, and uh, I mean, a lot of people are still not happy just by hearing about the online safety. Because if you don't have, uh, I guess, a robust democracy, then there's always that risk. So mm -hmm. I think uh, there should be a greater responsibility on social media service providers uh, to just vet what they're doing and, and constantly um, uh, update their services, update their security measures, just so that the consumers of their product can remain safe. Facebook provides a platform for, for you to express yourself in you know sometimes you get thoughts when you the first impression without doing proper research you react to it and sometimes people without even vetting their own thoughts mm. through research they just react to it and sometimes it doesn't help uh, because it can be traced back and it can be used to um, make uh, employment opportunities harder unfortunately the parents most of them are very much in the dark they don't know they're not told um, I am quite close to my girls, or so my girls' friends are close, their friends become close to me, so I get to hear these stories. But most of the parents have no idea this is happening. And if, uh, you know, until the girl or, or whoever has been victimized in that goes through some kind of trauma or depression or attempt suicide, then only it becomes an issue. You know? School are not told about it. Actually, the teachers um, don't I usually mom get told. wanted to talk to yeah. the students, especially yeah. the girls, about all this. So I discussed one of, uh, with one of the Muslim teachers and she really wanted like for mom to come and talk to them. But then like we, we had we had to go and talk to the principal, but then the principal was like go to the Ministry of Education, yeah. long process, so like when you formalize the process I think to some extent it's good, but to the other extent it deters people because a lot of these people don't want to go through the formal process. They don't want it written anywhere in the paper that mm -hmm. they've gone through this thing because it's a stigma to it. Eh? So it, it's difficult, it's difficult. 
I think also the boys should go through a really strong training or workshop kind of thing to make them aware the legal ramifications of these things because sometimes I just don't understand. They think it's fun at that age. They have, uh, you know, they, at that stage where they have got bragging rights kind of thing, so if they've got a girlfriend, they've done something, they want to brag about it and all that, when I think they don't really understand what it is. And legally, they could be, you know, like, like that case in Nandi where they could be sitting in jail for 10 years now. I think girls also need to be trained about what they can and cannot do. And so I think both, maybe all kids from different genders should be talked about this quite openly because at the moment I think they hear about it but they don't really know and understand the you know because they think your generation did not go through it you don't understand what what we're going through it so you know you it's different you resent you kind of control us in our life because you don't understand that we are going through this thing and you know we've got access we know how to do deal with things but. so we are lucky we are able to compare mm -hmm. I like them. And it changes the between now and where we will still say that we live through in a better day. But this kid can say that we live through in a smarter day. Most parents are struggling with questions like how do I prevent these things from happening to my daughter or son? How do I explain what has happened to a friend? or classmate of my son and daughter. If this does happen, where can we go for help and how can we stop it? In the context of a changing society where technology seems to be taking over, who is responsible? Mm -hmm.